Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is uh, part two in chapter five. In the uh, first part, we covered the definition mainly. What do we mean by uh, inequality and what do we mean by uh, poverty? Basically, we give the basic uh, description of those uh, terms. And we stop in here. We told that uh, there are two uh, distinct uh, ways uh, in terms of measuring the income inequality. The first one is personal distribution approach and the second one is uh, functional approach. So according to personal income distribution approach, we have four uh, distinct uh, methods in uh, understanding the uh, income inequality for a given nation. The simple uh, graphing and tabling, Kuznets ratio, Lorentz curve, and Gini coefficient are the those uh, four factors that we are going to cover right now. Okay, so according to simple uh, graphing, uh, basically what we do is uh, <coughs> a common method, uh, according to this tabling and graphing, is a common method is to divide the population into successive quantiles or deciles according to ascending income levels and then determine what the proportion of total national income is received by each income group. So this is the uh, step that we are following. I want to start this section by a reminder about the decile and quantile. When we work with 10 equal units, we call it decile system. And when we work with 5 equal units, we call it quantile system. In decile system, a population is divided into, or population would be divided into 10 equal numerical groups. So in decile system, population uh, that we are work with uh, is divided into 10 equal pieces. In the uh, second system or quantile system, which is more frequently employed in economic studies, a population is divided into five groups of equal size. Okay, uh, I am going to give an example. Uh, basically, I just a little bit rephrase the example given in the uh, textbook. Uh, and I just uh, make a little bit uh, change by uh, giving uh, special names for the individual. Given this background, now let's start with constructing inequality table based on the decile system. Let's assume that we have a society that consists of 10 people. And we know uh, the income of each person. As you see on the uh, left side, left column, we have the names, uh, the Temel, Ahmed, Mehmet. These are the name and uh, respective incomes uh, are uh, shown on the second column. The first step uh, in constructing table about income inequality is to write the name of each person and his income level. So name and income level. The second step is to sort out uh, individual according to their income where we start with the poorest person. So this is a sorting out uh, system where we start with the poorest person, the second, the third and the fourth and so on and so forth. So we are just uh, uh, put those names according to our scanning orders. As you see on the top of the table, we have the poorest person in society. The poorest person is Temel and his annual income is 18,000 Turkish lira. Then we will write the second person, uh, poorest person, which is uh, who is Ahmed. Then the third and fourth and so on. On the bottom, the richest guy in our uh, example is Mr. Z and his uh, his annual income is about 280,000 Turkish lira. Note that although it may be possible to work with monetary value, the better way to calculate the is uh, to uh, calculate the share or percentage of each income group. So instead of uh, working with these uh, monetary values, the better way is uh, to calculate each person's share in total income. So basically what we do is just dividing each person's income to total income created in this nation or this society. So uh, poorest guy, the Temel, uh, his income is 18,000. And if I divide total income of 1 million Turkish lira, so his share in total is 1.8. 
Ahmet is uh, earning about 32,000 and if we divide his income to total, his share uh, from total is 3.2%. So the using share instead of uh, level allows us uh, to compare income distribution of different countries with a different per capita income. So basically, these uh, nominal values do not represent anything because uh, different countries use a different uh, currency unit. Uh, they have different development level. That is why uh, when we compare, uh, especially uh, income inequality in a particular nation, uh, the common practice is to work with uh, the share of each segments. <clears throat> so this is uh, the data is uh, taken from pretty much a little bit. Uh, I, I changed the number, but. Anyway, this is uh, similar to Todaro's analysis in his book. Okay, in any uh, income uh, inequality work, the units of the respective income is sorted out from the smallest to richest. Uh, do not forget this uh, when you uh, like you know doing this type of analysis. Once we sort out the data from poor to rich, the rest is very easy. In this table, we assume that we have only 10 individuals in the society. But we can easily generalize this for a society with a larger population. So although we work with 10 people, but we can easily uh, change the structure. Let's uh, check our table again. Uh, as you see, uh, Temel is the poorest guy. His income is 18,000. But uh, when we divide this to uh, 12 months, he's basically making about uh, 1,530 a month. On the other hand, Mr. Z, his uh, yearly income is $280,000, but his, uh, if you divide this to 12, uh, his monthly income is about $23,000. Okay. In real life, generally, we deal with millions of people, and therefore we generalize the same logic for bigger data that maybe consists of millions of people. Let's summarize. We have a society consists of 10 people. We sort out people according to their income level, where the poor and his respective income is on the top, and then second person and third person, and finally the richest. If we know the total income for this society, we can easily cal calculate each person's income share. As we saw on the final uh, column on the uh, gra uh, figure, where we show each person's share of income. Uh, Temel receive about 1.8%, Ahmed is receiving 3.2%, and Mr. Z, the richest guy, is uh, earning about 28% of the total income. Basically, income inequality studies, we generally pay attention to the last column. Uh, that is, we concentrate on each person's share rather than how much a particular person earns uh, in a year. So level is although important, but the more important thing is uh, the share uh, variable. Another uh, system is quantile system uh, for personal income uh, when we uh, constructing table. In quantile system is uh, actually more frequently used economic studies. In the quantile system, we divide the total population into five equal sections. So we have like instead of ten, we have five people. I just changed a little bit the name, but using almost the same data. Uh, Temel, in this case, uh, earning about 50,000, and Idris is 90,000, and so on. So, and share, just dividing uh, a particular person income to total, it is going to give us the share. On the last column, we have a cumulative uh, sum. So, summing 5 plus 9 is 14, 14 plus 13 is 27, and so on and so forth. So, this is the quantile system. Assume that we have a society on five uh, on the table. We show how much each person uh, earns annually. On the second column, we share, uh, uh, we show his share from the total. And the third column, we calculate the cumulative share. We add up each person's share the uh, previous total. We will use this column in uh, Lorenz curve system uh, in a bit. Okay, uh, this is uh, the second video about uh, this chapter. Uh, see you in the next video.